Hey everybody, China Iron 2 here and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We last left off, we heard Gina's testimony. We pressed her on every portion of it and now we're going through the uh, history to try to find which point we could present some evidence in order to clinch this case. And I think I found it, I've been scrolling up and down and I found this quote here. She says, then after a while I hear this loud bang. Nearly jumped out of my skid I did and the scream just came out. All right, so everybody who's mentioned the loud bang says it could have been somebody falling on the floor, but they think it was something else. So let's go back. Let's do the loud bang. Loud bang. Now, before we present anything, well, I guess we can go into the present menu and not actually present anything. What could have made a loud bang? Autopsy report. Let's read it. Stabbed once in the admin. Died due to internal hemorrhaging. Okay. What could have done a loud bang? Wouldn't have been his button flying off. His hat sucks. His hat looks like Mr. Lady first may have made his hat. Magnifying glass? Let's look at that. Can't really see much. Is there ever anything different in the magnifying glass? Is this not the murder weapon? Yeah, there would be a W right here, right? Look at the murder weapon. No, because there's not a W on both sides. The W's on the sheath. Okay. Where do they get the sheath from? Loud bangs. Loud bang sounds like a shot. Debtors. Omnibus. Would anything here cause a bang? Where the horses go. Is that a latch? You can certainly see inside the carriage through this opening, that's for sure. Yes, and there's a lamp in the enclosed cabin. So I'm sure the witness would have been able to see quite clearly. It's not good for us. There's a latch right there. Can I look at that latch? Let me look at that. That loud bang could have been the... That latch closing? It won't let me look at that latch. Let's look inside, because the cabin has changed. can't see that latch from in here. It's quite a large skylight. Yes, quite large enough to afford a good view. Doesn't appear to be handle or catch of any description, so I suppose it can't be open from inside the cabin at least. But it can be open from outside, like we just saw. Hmm. And there's blood here now. Telling you, I think he was thrown in here, and then he picked him up. Right? Oh, there's got to be a way to see this. All right, let's go up here. I just see I see that catch on the roof. I don't know how to highlight it though. Y'all see it? It's right here, right? Why would they model that if that's not a thing? Can't zoom in, can I? Certainly see the inside carriage from this opening. Yes, and there's a lamp. It's not good for us. 
Some catch here. I don't know if that's it. I don't know if I'm on the right um, line of reasoning here, but that's what it seems like to me. Let's go back. Loud bank. All right, hold on. Let's go back. I've only got two of these little things left, so we're going to save. Uh, how do we save? Here we go. Oh, records. Save. Save on number four. Overwrite. Save again on number five. Okay. So let's try this. Present. Carriage. Skylight. Our blood on the floor. Should we do blood on the floor or the skylight? Let's do blood on the floor. Let's try the blood on the floor. That's blood, isn't it? Something wrong? Oh, it's just, well, this blood thing is so obvious, that's all, and yet Van Zykes has made no mention of it. Yeah, there's a bad feeling. I think I hit the wrong button. I need to present R. Objection. There's clearly something odd about that last statement made by the witness. There's clearly something odd here indeed. Your behavior, Council. Oh, haha. Please, don't mind me. Be significantly easier if you would lower your hands. Okay, so that's not the statement. Won't lower my hand until I prove my client's innocence, as long as it's quite quick. So not the loud bang. Swill, swell found them. Can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. It's pitching there. It's right old waste of time. I got nothing to show for me troubles at night. Snuck inside the carriage before they hooked up the horses, just like always. Huh. We'll look at the carriage again. Let's go in here. Yes, yes, yes. Talk to me. She said she couldn't see anything in here. Uh, I didn't click on the right thing. Here. And it looks like, no, she wouldn't have been able to see anything. So that statement has to be true. She said it's not as comfortable. Oh, let's look at the pictures again. Is it the writing that's up here? Let's go back. Yeah, the picture's right. Huh? I man, I don't know on this one. Is there anything with this? All right, just open it up. I think this is all the same info we've had before. Okay, nothing new there. Right old waste of time, nothing to show me troubles that night. I tell you there can't be a blind thing in that hiding place. Loud bang. It's because of that this swell found me. He did help me get away. Let's see if she says anything. All six members of the jury have decided the defendant was innocent. One brief shining moment. It's clear they all are still very unsure. If we could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony, so we would clinch the verdict we want. I have this niggling feeling. Something's bothering me, but I just can't quite put my finger on it. Alright. 
waste of time. Let's let's uh, present on that one. What was a waste of time? Hmm. Let's examine the knife again. I'm skipping that because I said all that before. It's not a W. Don't think there's anything else I can click on here. The blood. Same thing, talking about blood. Nothing here. Let's look at the picture again. Is there anything in the picture that's giving this away? Magnifying glass does nothing. Man, the only thing I can think to present would be the Omnibus. So let's present it. Objection. And we're probably going to fail. Nope. He's mad at that one too. Okay, so we failed completely. Thank you, Council. That will do. I've seen enough. According to the powers vested in me by Her Majesty the Queen, I declare no further examination necessary. All right, let's load. Load the game. I don't want to save scum it, but I really don't... I don't know if I'm just not seeing something or if it's so obtuse. Loud bang. Swill found me. So I did the loud bang. I did the waste of time, nothing to show for it. Snuck in carriage before they hooked up the horses, just like always. And she says she was in there the whole time. Waste of time, nothing to show for it. Let's press that again. Well, most nights, she's in the God Permit. It's the same thing she said before. I'm just trying to look to see if there's anything... So we can't pre present during this. So she's saying that she set here. Okay. Can't see anything. Let's press this and see if uh, Mr. McGilda does anything. I'm skipping through this dialogue because we've already read it. It's the same dialogue we've seen before. I'm just trying to see if Mr. McGilda looks any different. <laughs> well, no. Okay, so he does say something. How come we didn't see that before? Excuse me. Something wrong, Mr. McGilded? Oh, I do apologize. Was there something the matter, Council? Just wondering if Miss Lestrade's last comment made something occur to you, perhaps. You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh, no, no, no. It was nothing important. I was feeling bad for the poor lass is all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad. Shut up in the dark. Twas terrifying, so it was. I see, yes. I'm sure we can all sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. Aye, and I don't know about yourself, but I find that the darkness seems to make everything you hear seem that much louder as well. Make everything you hear seem that much louder. 
So he's trying to, like, influence her? Yeah. I suppose it does, maybe. Miss Lestrade. Did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual noise, perhaps? Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. But Jabers, there's no need to tell the whole world of me foibles, you little scamp. What a pity. If only Mr. Strade had heard something, it might have given us a vital new clue. Yes. What should we make of that last statement of hers? His snoring? I'm gonna say it's important because we haven't gotten anything else to go on. My lord. I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But all she said was she heard nothing. Yes, which is profoundly important point. I'm almost sure of it. Hmm. I'm almost sure that I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern mind, Council. Nevertheless, don't be racist. Miss Gina Lestrade, you will supplement your formal testimony by repeating that last statement, please. What? Supplement? What are you on about? Don't give me all your fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do. Well, it didn't work for me. That's right. Insult the judge. Always a good move. I was straining my ears to work out what was going on, but I couldn't hear. All I could hear was snoring. All right, so we're going to press that. Hold it! So you were straining to hear what was happening the entire time since the moment you hid yourself? Um, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, there's no one in the cabin to start with. I could just push the cushion up and have a butcher's to see what was what. But then when I saw this wheel getting on... It gave me... I got my head down so he didn't notice me. And Mr. McGill did sit on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? Yeah. Would you Adam and Eve it? What a mug. What does that even mean? He's got an expression? We'll come back to that. So then all I could do was listen. I was waiting to jump out there as soon as I heard him leave, see? But would he? Not likely. Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. So I just had to stay put and listen to him driving his pigs to market, snoring like an old dog he was. Hmm. Are there any conclusions we can draw from that, I wonder? Doesn't add up. Miss Lestrade, what you've just told the court is clearly at odds with the facts. Ah. At odds? Are, are you sure, man? To be honest, I'm not sure, but I, this is all I've got. Absolutely. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull-witted as I... Oh, I didn't do my voice. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull-witted as I feared. So Vin Zykes realized it too. Is she talking about the other passengers getting on? Counsel, I must insist that you bolster your claim with evidence, or some complicit party's name at the very least. Oh my god. Yes, my lord. I expect you to demonstrate this alleged contradiction to the court. According to Miss Lestrade, while she was hiding in the omnibus that night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGilded snoring. But think, Ryanosuke, think. There's something else she should have heard. Yeah, the, uh... She should have heard the, uh, victim get on. Very well, my lord. Allow me to elaborate. On a particular sound that Miss Lestrada could have not failed to hear on the night in question. The sound very clearly explained by the presence of the following person. It would be him. Present. Take that! Thrice-fired Mason? Yes, my lord. The sound that Miss Lestrade could not have failed to hear 
Is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding the omnibus? Yes, that is right. I did get that one. Y'all gotta give me that. I failed the other one. Twice. But I did get this one. Order, order! Explain your reasoning, Council. Mr. Strade, allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on board the omnibus, is that correct? Yeah, of course I was. I got on while the driver was in the pub, didn't I? And the next person aboard the omnibus was Mr. McGilded. That it was, not a soul in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least, not in plain sight. So you were, to all intents and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus at that time. Did I not just say as much? I wasn't traveling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I saw him get on, remember? Through the crack under the seat cushion. He was on his own, for sure. And from what we heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that on its onward journey. During which time, did you not hear the door opening or closing at all? Nah, I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, weren't it? Waiting for the swell to leave. So yes, the guy was murdered and tossed through the skylight from the outside. That's why we can see the class from the top. I figured it out. I just don't know how to tell the game that I figured it out. I think I figured it out. In which case, when and how did the victim end up in the carriage? Ah! We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabinet of the omnibus. Therefore, Miss Lestrada's statements about what she did or did not hear is at odds with the facts. Yes, this petty thief's statement was clearly flawed. Lord Van Dykes. Yes, he knew. He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Lestrade's statement. <laughs> it would seem words of thanks are in order for my learned friend. What are you talking about? You have, you have demonstrated matters impeccably. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable. Her words are convenient untruths, nothing more. He's dead right. How could the victim possibly not have boarded the omnibus? That makes no sense whatsoever. And this girl is a pit pocket. Let's not forget that. Back. She didn't even say anything. I didn't want to judge the dear little mite just because she has some rather naughty ways. But I must say, I can't abide liars. And neither can I. Mr. Foreman! I didn't want to judge the girl just because she has some less than salabrous ways. But I must say, I cannot abide liars. Arg. Mr. Narohoto, that's five jury members leaning towards guilty. Oh, another chalice. Where are you going to throw it this time? Well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. Oh, he's sipping. He's not pissed. He thinks he's won. Yes. Very refreshing. Ah! Garg! What are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless Eastern Amadan? I don't know who the Amadan is. This is carnage. It's perfect. Stop licking the knife. Drew number two is the only one left. Mr. Naruhoto, the way this is going, I know, if we can't find some new way to con convince everyone of Mr. McGilded's innocence, the judge will rule and will have lost. I very much wanted to believe the words of one of London's most respected gentlemen, but 
Those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Hold it! Yes, the witness's last statement seems to have revealed a critical inconsistency in her story. However, if we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed an entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? I'm saying the victim was killed outside of the cabin and thrown in through the skylight. Council? I'm sorry, sir. Whatever do you mean? Council, I will not tolerate you attempting to prorogue my adjudication. Explain yourself at once. When the accused boarded the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet the victim's body was found inside the car carriage. If this petty thief's words are to be believed, is he on our side now? Are you that honorable, good sir? Oh, no, he's not. How do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? Skylight. It's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. He's put there after he died. There is another entrance. but I also believe he was put there after he died. If the door wasn't opened even once, the only explanation is that, that the victim entered the enclosed cabin some other way. Objection! I wondered what new fantasy you would come up with in your blind panic. But behold, the omnibus here is here for all to see. Only one side of the enclosed cabin is furnished with a door. The other has only windows. Fixed windows which cannot possibly open. In short, there is no entrance to the cabin other than the door. Objection. But there could be. There's one possibility you haven't considered. Oh really? Yes, one other way inside that isn't the door. Another opening the use of which allowed the victim to appear inside the enclosed cabin. All right, counsel. The defense will identify the location for the court. Here's the omnibus on which the incident occurred. Where on earth is this entrance by which you propose the victim entered the cabin? Skylight, right here. Present, and that is R. The answer is obvious. It can only have been the skylight. I say the skylight? Objection! Your ludicrous proposal almost has me lost for words. However, Objection. the skylight may well be large enough for someone to pass through. Objection. So you claim. But do you have a shred of evidence to support your addled brained theory? Yes, the blood on the floor. Both Mr. McGilded and Miss Lestrade said the same in their testimonies. They each claimed to have heard a loud thud, such as the noise made by someone falling to the floor. Yes, which has already been explained. As the sound of the victim falling from his seat, having been assaulted with the dagger. Yes, it has, but would a man slipping from the seat onto the floor really have made such a loud noise as the witnesses described? A noise loud enough to cause Miss Lestrade to let out an involuntary cry, in fact. Good. Good gracious! Perhaps, in fact, that was the moment the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase that. The victim didn't enter the cabin as such. He fell into it. Objection! You're now suggesting that the victim fell from the skylight into the cabin? That's simply impossible. 
How can you be so sure? Because if the victim had fallen inside through the skylight, as you say, the passengers on the roof deck would have seen it happen. And yet, not one person made mention of such events in their testimony. This is true. Guess we're going to have to find out more next episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, please consider a like, a comment, and or a subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.